This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Get 73% off a two-year plan. There's a link below. More about them in a bit. For a lot of people, the internet has become the first stop when it comes to most facets of the daily lives. Whether they're looking for information, entertainment, goods and services, or just silly pointless memes, the internet has it all. It also has its fair share of mysteries, from creepy videos to incredibly difficult puzzles and emails from beyond the grave. Today, we'll be taking a look at some of the most notorious enigmas of the online world. Number 10. WebDriver Torso For almost one year, between 2013 and 2014, WebDriver Torso was the most puzzling mystery on the internet. What was it? Well, it was a YouTube account that posted thousands of 11-second videos featuring blue and red rectangles. And that was it. But human imagination did the rest of the work, and soon enough, people online were speculating that the channel could be run by spies sending encrypted communications to each other, or some kind of secret experiment, or... Of course, it could be aliens. The rampant speculation went on for about 10 months, until online sleuths finally tracked down the source, and spoiler alert, the real solution was a lot more mundane. It was a quality control channel used by YouTube to ensure that the videos that ended up online were the same as the original files. Why did they use random colored rectangles? Well, because they were easy to make. An Italian statistician who went by Sergetto Ventuno, or Subject 21, was the first to solve the mystery by seeing that the channel belonged to a YouTube network registered in Switzerland, that also contained other channels which posted content from the Google offices in Zurich. Afterwards, Google came clean with an appropriately rickrolling statement which said, We're never going to give you uploading that's slow or loses video quality, and we're never going to let you down by playing YouTube in poor video quality. That's why we're always running tests like WebDriver Torso. Number 9. A858 A very similar mystery occurred on Reddit in 2011 when a strange subreddit popped up that contained only posts made out of strings of numbers and letters. The name of the subreddit as well as the account making these posts was also a seemingly random sequence of numbers and letters, but it became known simply by the first four, A858. It took almost a year for other people to notice the bizarre account, but afterwards came the excited speculation over what could possibly be the meaning behind this unusual behavior. Soon enough, a related subreddit appeared called Solving A858, which consisted mainly of amateur cryptographers working to crack the code. Only a few of the thousands of posts made on A858 have ever been solved, but they seem to be random images or words with no relation to one another. Then in 2016, a post appeared on the subreddit that simply said, The A858 project has concluded you may unsubscribe. A while later, the same account gave a bit more information, admitting that they had been paid by an undisclosed company to post encrypted code puzzles for an undisclosed reason. Some believe that this was a commercial stunt that backfired, but others think that the project is still ongoing and at a different stage. Number 8. The Plague Doctor Officially, this internet mystery is known as 11BX1371, and for a time it was heralded as the creepiest video on YouTube. It is a two-minute black and white clip which shows a person in a homemade Plague Doctor costume standing inside a dilapidated building building with a forest visible behind them. The video is accompanied by static noises, and the figure has a blinking light in its palm, which appears to relay Morse code messages. The clip first went viral in 2015, when it was first publicized by a tech blog called Gadget ZZ. As people kept investigating it, they discovered that there was a lot of disturbing content hidden in the video. Bizarre sentences, threats, and even violent images were included in the plain text form, Morse code, and the spectrogram of the audio. The online world has speculated that the video could have been a prank, a student project, some kind of viral marketing stunt, or something more sinister, such as the work of a serial killer or a threat of bioterrorism. After weeks of sleuthing, people actually found the location where the video was made thanks to the exterior shots of the forest. It was a meat market in Wuhan. <laughs> I couldn't help myself! That was a lie! It was an abandoned mental asylum in Poland near the town of Otwok. Next came trying to find the identity of the person who made the video. This proved difficult since several tried to claim ownership and dozens more made copycat clips, but a few months later the creator was tentatively identified by the pseudonym of Parker Warner Wright. He claimed to be an American living in Poland that made the video as an art project. Number 7. The Jack Frost Emails The story of Jack Frost is a familiar ghost story, but one that has been updated for the modern world. When the 32-year-old from Dun Moore, Pennsylvania, died suddenly in 2011, he left his friends and family in shock, but he soon started contacting them from beyond the grave. He didn't do this in the traditional methods, by moving things around the house or appearing as a ghostly figure, but rather through email. Three of Jack's friends had received messages purported to be from him after his death. The most obvious answer would be that a hacker was pranking them, or perhaps somebody else who knew Frosty's password, but they all insisted that the emails contained private information known only to them and Jack. Tim Hart, for example, received an email that had Jack Froze as the sender, which simply said, Did you hear me? I'm at your house. 
clean your effing attic. Right before Frozer's death, the two of them spent some time together in that attic, talking about what to do with the empty space. Ultimately, the people who received the messages chose not to look too closely at who was sending them, so the true source of the emails remains a mystery. Number 6. Markovian Parallax Denigrate We move on to an oldie at least in terms of the internet, dating all the way back to 1996, when a discussion system called Usenet was employed to read and post messages. In August of that year, Usenet was inundated with hundreds of strange messages that appeared to be nothing but random words strung together. They had only one thing in common. They all shared the same subject line, another seemingly random grouping of words, Markovian Parallax Denigrate. Since 1996 was a bit too early for most internet sleuths, the original posts were all dismissed as gibberish and lost. Only one survives, and it says things like Jitterbug McKinley Abe Break Newtonian Inferring Core Update Cohen Air Collaborate Rue Sports Writing Rococo, and so on. It wasn't until decades later that the online world started obsessing over Markovian Parallax Denigrate again, treating it like some kind of mysterious puzzle, especially after a feature about it was published in 2012 by The Daily Dot. So far, nobody was able to find any hidden meaning to the message, which can be meaningful in its own way, since many think that the posts were simply the result of a primitive spam bot or text generator. Still, others believe that there could be something there hidden among the gibberish, and even now, 25 years later, they are still working on one of the internet's earliest puzzles. Now, one thing that's certainly not a mystery about the internet is how dangerous can be if you're not taking proper precautions, and that's where today's sponsor NordVPN comes in handy. Look, I run like 47 YouTube channels, so I'm on the internet a lot, and look, I talk to people all the time who are using the internet like it's the 1990s, they're not using a VPN, they're not getting the most out of the internet. Using the internet with a VPN is just better. With NordVPN, you can rest easy knowing that your internet use is safe behind a next generation wall of encryption. Block malware. Bypass annoying ads that track your web traffic. It's much more secure. And NordVPN doesn't keep any logs on your internet use because they know where you go is none of their business. And what they do give you is 5,000 server options scattered across 59 countries so your IP can live wherever you want it to. And that provides you to a lot of new options when it comes to shopping or especially streaming. Fire up a VPN and see what Netflix can do for you in another country. It's incredible. So regardless of whether you're considering a VPN for yourself or as a gift for another internet user in your life, Nord gives you options. And right now, you guys can take advantage of a special deal that NordVPN is running. Any purchase of a two-year plan is just $89, and it comes with an additional four months for free. And if you make a purchase and decide a VPN isn't for you, money-back guarantee for 30 days. There's never been a better time to enhance your online experience with NordVPN, so head to nordvpn.com forward slash top tens or use the code top tens at checkout or just follow the link in the description box below. Now, more mysteries from the interwebs. Number five, Gidis. Let's move on to a mystery with a bit of humor in it, and one that also has an answer. It started quite innocuously in 2017 when comedian Nate Fernald posted a picture on Twitter of a metal pin depicting some kind of fantasy creature with the name Gidis. He had bought a bunch of them from an eBay seller, but didn't know who Gidis actually was, so he put the question out on the internet, confident that somebody would remember it from some old comic or perhaps a TV show from a different country. As it turned out, the internet had never heard of Gidus, and neither did the eBay seller. After Fernand's post went viral, somebody contributed with a bit more information. They provided a picture of a sticker sheet with six fantasy characters, and among them was Gidus. The sheet was labeled as the Land of Tar, so at least we know where the weird little creature came from, but that raised a new question. What was the Land of Tar? Was it a television show? or an old children's book. It wasn't until two years later that the podcast Endless Thread solved the mystery. The Land of Tar was the work of Sam Petrucci, an artist best known for doing some of the original artwork of G.I. Joe. The Land of Tar was a very short-lived series of fantasy stickers that he produced for the Denison Manufacturing Company in 1981. It only ever existed as stickers, though, so who made the pins and why they only made pins of Gidus still remains an unanswered question. Number four, unfavorable semicircle. Welcome to what some people call the strangest mystery on YouTube, while others refer to it as the creepy channel that has ever been created on the platform. The name of the channel is Unfavorable Semicircle, and it appeared in 2015. Like WebDriver Torso, it started publishing a lot of weird videos, but they lacked the uniformity of the former. Some videos lasted just a few seconds, while others were hours long. Some had static or distortion sounds, others were silent, some had abstract images, others just a few dots. Most of them, however, were titled using a random six-digit number and the astrological sign for Sagittarius. In less than a year, the channel uploaded around 
72,000 videos, at one point averaging a video every few minutes. Of course, once the people online got wind of it, people started wondering what the point of all of this was. Was it another test channel, or was it some kind of art project? Did it contain any secret messages, or was it the product of a disturbed mind? Unlike WebDriver Torso, we never got an answer to these questions. YouTube deleted the channel in February 2016 once it started getting publicity for multiple violations of its policy. Since then, nobody has claimed ownership of it, and unfavorable semicircle remains a mystery. Number three, the most mysterious song on the internet. If you're the type of person who knows a lot of obscure music, particularly 1980s New Wave, then this mystery is for you. It is a song whose author and title are unidentified, despite the collective efforts of the online world. This whole thing started in 1984 when a German man identified as Darius S recorded songs from the radio onto his cassette deck, primarily from the program Music for Jung Lute, or Music for Young People, an NDR station. There was a song which he really liked but didn't know its name, so he wrote it down as a question mark. Two decades later, he digitized his collection, and in 2007, his sister tried to help him finally identify the mysterious song by posting a snippet online. She had no luck initially, but things don't usually go viral immediately. For 12 years, the recording of this mysterious song languished in the forgotten recesses of the internet until 2019, when the story was picked up and started spreading like wildfire. Soon enough, there were podcasts, subreddits, YouTube videos, online magazines, and Discord servers all talking about the song, but still nobody recognized it. Somebody even contacted the DJ who worked at NDR in the 80s, Paul Baskerville, but he didn't know it either, saying that he sometimes played obscure underground music sent to him from across the Berlin Wall or from Eastern Europe. There have been a few leads, but for now, the unknown track keeps its title of most mysterious song on the internet. Number two, Mariana's Web. Even if you have no inclination of ever visiting it, you probably have still heard of the dark web, the shadowy part of the internet that can't be accessed in the regular way and never shows up on search engines where you could find all sorts of illegal stuff, including drugs, scams, and even killers for hire. Well, if internet legends are to be believed, then the regular dark web is a mundane, trivial place when compared to a much more sinister and secretive online world known as Mariana's Web. Named after the Mariana Trench, the deepest spot in the ocean, this web allegedly contains sites that can't be found anywhere else, full of extremely confidential secrets that range from government files to the private archives of the Vatican to the location of Atlantis. Some even say the Mariana's Web is fully controlled by an artificial intelligence that has gained sentience. Even just accessing Mariana's Web should be technically impossible because it involves solving some equations that can only be completed using a quantum computer. Many remain unconvinced of its existence, declaring Mariana's Web to simply be a bogeyman of the internet. Number one, Cicada 3301. Hello, we're looking for intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. There is a message hidden in this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck. That is a message from 2012 that launched one of the deepest mysteries on the web. Posting by an account named 3301 and featuring an image of a cicada as its logo, the mystery soon had a name, Cicada 3301. Several codes have been posted since. They have come in different mediums and use a wide range of techniques such as steganography and cryptography in order to hide their message. This means that only the most skilled codebreakers would be able to untangle the web, discover the correct answer, and win a mystery prize. So what happens if you get it right? Well, we still don't know. None of the people who successfully solved one of these puzzles went public with their findings. People have speculated that Cicada 3301 is a highly advanced recruitment tool to find the world's best codebreakers organized by governmental agencies such as the CIA or MI6 or a private cybersecurity company. Others believe that a more shadowy outfit is behind the puzzles, such as a cult or the Freemasons. Maybe in the future, we might learn more about Cicada 3301, but for now, it remains one of the internet's greatest mysteries. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you again to NordVPN for sponsoring. Please do hit that like button. Please do subscribe. And thank you for watching.